Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com. Today, to continue our journey in the Razor Archive series and tell you a little bit about the Gillette Sheraton. So, the success of the 1934 Aristocrat was going on for several years. People were loving the one-piece twist-open style razor and Gillette wanted to offer something at a lower price point. That was always their model. It would come in at the high price point, get people used to it, and then offer a you know budget version and this was no different uh, this was the first budget entry-level razor the Gillette Sheraton and this was sold for 98 cents in Christmas of 1937 that's when they introduced it advertisements at the time talked about that it was a limited edition razor it was only gonna be uh, you know in limited quantities get one now always drumming up the sales getting people excited and creating kind of a frenzy to buy them uh, it was a very very budget-friendly razor 98 cents in 1937 would be about 17, 18 dollars today. So still a great, great value compared to the Aristocrat, which was four dollars, so four times the price of this. Um, what a bargain. It was still the one piece style razor, still had the open comb, but had the thinner kind of super speed style handle or just, just the thinner kind of ball end handle or new whatever, There's just a thinner handle from Gillette. Um, it had, of course, the, the butterfly door open. Now you will notice that the you may people may think this is missing end caps. This is what I call generation one. There's no end caps in generation one, which would be the aristocrat, the Sheraton, and the senator. Uh, and you also notice that this has little circles, kind of like little dimples, that are the serve as the hinge for the door. And this is on the earlier models. Later, after this, the Sheraton was offered with your traditional hook style. Um, end cap kind of area and that was later but this razor was put up in 24 karat gold and in a cardboard box these boxes are actually super hard to find I think the box is harder to find than the razor set sold with five blue blades again 98 cents what a tremendous value here uh, very successful people loved it and it, it was continuing to kind of promote this whole idea of the one piece razor getting people to open them quickly change the blades quickly and get a great shave and you know ultimately buy more blades that was always the business model buy more blades uh, you may see these razors today uh, in you know mine and my collection here again my collection pieces I don't touch I don't revamp or replate this is uh, I would say an okay condition one they're pretty hard to find in great condition where the gold is still really bright and shiny and has been worn away and that's just kind of par for the course um, a lot of the Gillette razors that are gold were never lacquered. If they were, it doesn't really hold up over time. So don't be surprised if you see something like this. Contrary to popular opinion, Gillette never offered a brass finish razor. Meaning, if you see it, it's brass. That means somewhere along its 60 year, 80 year history, someone polished it off or just has worn off over time. Uh, it's been cleaned improperly or whatever. But Gold usually always will kind of look brassy and uh, the most shiny parts of the razor are probably going to be inside or under the head will still be the original gold but the handle and the outer doors usually are always pretty pretty warm. A lot of people today will plate these in nickel or rhodium and you know we do it all the time and without the gold plating it is identical to the Senator. So there's really no way to tell a big difference. Um, of course you know, there's other little things you can look at. Oh, what is this one has the dimples or whatever. But bottom line is that the plating really made this razor the Sheraton. So one common problem that happens in a lot of these Generation 1 Butterfly razors is that they don't open properly. Now mine opens just fine, opens evenly. But um, you'll see sometimes as you open the doors, it's kind of hard and it kind of does one of these like a seesaw as it goes up. And that's because this center bar uh, I call the T-bar because it looks like a shape of a T. It goes across and goes all the way down to the knob. Uh, it only has one rivet that connects this horizontal part to the vertical part. So it's just one rivet that connects this and that allows for uh, the seesaw action. Later on in generation two, like the super speed, the fat boy, the red tip, whatever, Gillette put a second rivet on this, this vertical uh, push rod and that allowed for, the, for it to be a lot more secure. Another common thing that happens is because it is an open comb, and again, the only uh, open comb razor uh, in this generation one for butterfly opening razors, uh, is the outer teeth, if you drop this on the ground, 
This outer tooth will sometimes get bent and there'll be kind of like a smile, be kind of the whole guard will kind of be curved and you'll see that the outer teeth are bent. And that also will affect the butterfly action because if you look, the butterfly happens simply because you push up and it cams over, it rotates over as it hits that tooth. So if the tooth is not in alignment across the whole guard and one's lower than the other, it's gonna cause the door to wanna crank open premature and um, kind of also stresses that one rivet. So kind of a, a flaw of this design and one reason why Gillette uh, modified it with generation two razors. So uh, on a rarity scale of one, you can find this at a thrift store anytime you go out to five, it belongs in a museum. Uh, I would give this a, I would say probably a two and a half or three, just the razor itself. It's not terribly collectible, it's not terribly rare. Now if you get into the case, and the case is in nice condition, um, has original blades, definitely gonna move up, you know, maybe a half a point or a point. And if you find it with the cardboard box, I would easily say four and a half, five out of five, because again, I've only seen a few of these cardboard boxes still around. This is 1937, 1938. Uh, it's, it's, you know, right around the start of the World War II era. Uh, just not something you see very, very commonly. So that is the Gillette Sheraton. Thank you so much for watching. Continue your journey on the Razor Archive series and many more videos here at Razor Emporium. Uh, if you leave a comment, if you have one, if you've seen one, if you, you know, think it's not that rare, tell me below. And if you leave a comment, you're entered in to win this, the official Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. Thanks guys for watching, and we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. <laughs>